Music, film, and stardom are some of the most unpredictable things around. I'm going to live through this, and when it's all over, I'll never be hungry again. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 entertainment predictions that turned out to be false. For this list, we're looking at prophecies, guesses, or projections that were made in the entertainment world and turned out to be painfully, painfully false. We're also taking into account who supposedly made the prediction, because if it's someone who should have known better, it makes the fail that much worse. There was nothing left of the guy. Number 10. The wireless music box has no imaginable commercial value. David Sarnoff's Associates on the radio. There's no profitable value in wooden boxes that make noise. These were essentially the words of David Sarnoff's associates in response to the businessman and radio and TV pioneer's appeal to invest money into radio. Good morning, Vietnam! Hey, this is not a test. This is rock and roll. Time to rock it from the Delta to the DMZ. But their claim that no one would pay for a message that was sent to nobody in particular was clearly off the mark, as radio is still going strong today. Whether it's bringing you the latest tunes, the news, or commercial jingles, which have a particular knack for getting stuck in your head. Armor hot dogs, anyone? Hot dog, armor hot dog. What kinds of kids eat armor hot dogs? Number nine, the next Spielberg, Newsweek on M. Night Shyamalan. I don't see anything. With The Sixth Sense and Unbreakable under his belt by the new millennium, director M. Night Shyamalan was quickly being touted as the next big thing. Shit! So, in anticipation of his next film, Signs, Newsweek decided to go all out and hail him as the next Spielberg on one of their 2002 covers. Unfortunately, Signs was just so-so. Is it bad? And things pretty much went downhill from there. At least that's what the critics and many vocal movie fans have tried to make known. Screwed, right? Cases in point, The Village in 2004, The Happening in 2008, The Last Airbender in 2010, and, well, you get the idea. I'm truly sorry for what I've done to you and yours. Number 8. No online database will replace your daily newspaper. Clifford Stoll on the internet. Get your morning star. Read all about it. Clifford Stoll is a big name in the world of computers, credited as the guy who caught one of the earliest computer hackers in 1986. For this reason, many believed his claim that no online database could replace the newspaper. Imagine, if you will, sitting down to your morning coffee, turning on your home computer to read the day's newspaper. Well, it's not as far-fetched as it may seem. In fact, both local San Francisco papers are investing a lot of money to try and get to service just like that started. Big newspapers began to have online versions in the late 90s. Almost all printed newspapers do, and it's pretty much a necessity considering how people resort to smartphones or their tablets for their daily fixes of news on the go. Not only is it arguably more convenient for many, but it's also a fact of life today. We want to be able to um, reach our readers where they are um, with the news that they need when they need it. Number seven. It will be gone by June. Variety on rock and roll. And here he is, America's newest rock and roll sensation, the California kid, Richie Fallon! Rock and roll threw dirt in the face of conformists and stepped on the toes of the man. You have managed to upset the entire school with this godforsaken noise. Noise? That's the Ramones' best album. Number one with a bullet. So for this reason, among others, many thought it was a short-term fad, including Variety. In early 1955, the magazine claimed the musical genre would disappear by June. But boy, were they ever wrong. John, it's Marvin, your cousin Marvin Barry. You know that new sound you're looking for? Well, listen to this. It's over 50 years later, and rock and roll has since spawned multiple iterations of the hip-swinging, head-banging, hair-raising genre. And it ain't showing any signs of stopping. All right, let's pray. God of rock, thank you for this chance to kick ass. We are your humble servants. Please give us the power to blow people's minds with our high-voltage rock. In your name we pray. Amen. 
Number six, can't sing, can't act, balding, can dance a little. RKO Radio Picture Screen Test Report on Fred Astaire. So that's the way they wanted to play it, all right. Suit-wearing executives have free reign to be as critical as possible at screen tests. But the RKO Radio Picture Screen Test, stating the soon-to-be legendary entertainer Fred Astaire couldn't sing and merely dances a little, was obviously just plain wrong. These mugs were smart, but they made one mistake. They got me mad. On top of that, a studio exec allegedly said his ears were too big and he had a bad chin. Doesn't seem like audiences noticed, though. Fred Astaire went on to have a 75-plus year career, making over 30 movies and constantly being pitted against the beautiful Ginger Rogers. Number five, you'd have a decent book if you got rid of that Gatsby character, anonymous editor on The Great Gatsby. Did he go? <laughs> F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby is one of the most famous American novels of all time. And it'll all be wiped out forever. Featuring strong social commentary throughout and driven by the mysterious title character, Jay Gatsby. An editor of Fitzgerald's work suggested that he would have a decent book on his hands if he got rid of Gatsby, the most integral character in the book. Good thing the writer didn't take the advice. The character isn't only the unforgettable center of this literary classic, he's also inspired countless people thereafter. I'm Gatsby. Number four, I'm glad it'll be Clark Gable who's falling on his nose, not me. Gary Cooper on Gone with the Wind. Do you sit tall in the saddle? <laughs> Some movies will forever be cemented in cinema history, and Gone with the Wind is undoubtedly one of them. When movie star Gary Cooper was offered a role in said movie, he turned it down. That's a no, yep. Mm -hmm. Instead, Clark Gable starred. Cooper said the movie would be Hollywood's biggest flop, and that he was glad Gable would take the fall for it and not him. And if a bullet gets me, so help me, I'll laugh at myself for being an idiot. Tell that to the history books. I figure we belong together, being the same sort. Cooper wasn't the only naysayer, though. An MGM executive also wrongly claimed that no Civil War movie ever made a nickel. Way to stick your foot in your mouth. Not good enough. Number three, children just aren't interested in witches and wizards anymore. Anonymous publisher on Harry Potter. It can be hard to gauge what children really want, but back in the late 90s, J.K. Rowling hit the nail on the head with the Harry Potter book franchise. My parents read the first Harry Potter book to me, and then I, as soon as I learned how to read, I began to read them by myself. If Rowling had listened to advisors, one of which was a publisher that claimed witches and wizards were on the way out, she might have given up on her magical adventure too soon. The seven Potter books have gone on to inspire films, games, and theme parks, and earn millions and millions of dollars. They cast their spell on children and adults around the world. Number two, the Beatles have no future in show business, Decca Records. That's John Lennon, George Harrison, Paul McCartney, and Ringo Starr. It's not unusual for bands to take a beating from critics. Take the Rolling Stones, whose first business manager wanted to get rid of Mick Jagger. Even the Beatles had their fair share of negativity too. At first, anyway. Back in 1962, a Decca Records executive let down the four-piece from Liverpool with the statement that guitar music was through and that the Fab Four had no future in music. No real need to go into how wrong that was. This is the Beatles we're talking about, the most popular band ever. Come on. We mean, come together. Right now, over me. Before we reveal our number one prediction fail, here are a few honorable mentions. The first one. 
is a widescreen iPod with touch controls. So young and beautiful. I want to be kissed by you, just you, nobody else but you. I want to be kissed by you alone. Nobody in the history of American sport has made the same impact that Babe Ruth made on the world of baseball. Number one, who the hell wants to hear the actors talk? Harry Warner on Talking Pictures. I'm Walter Cronkite. What you see behind me is my voice, a picture of it. This is a motion picture soundtrack, and this is the end result of a show business revolution that still ranks as one of the big entertainment stories of the 20th century. Cinema has taken quite a few cynical hits over the years. Charlie Chaplin called it canned drama. But the quote that sticks in our heads most is this comment from H.M. Warner. Yes, one of the founders of Warner Brothers. The premiere of the Vitaphone Sound on Disc system meets with favorable reaction, although there are some skeptics who uphold the cause of the silent film. He thought being able to hear the actors in a movie was absurd. And then the talkies exploded with popularity. Seriously, do you really think silent films would have lasted this long? Not a chance. Do you agree with our list? What do you think was the biggest failed forecast in entertainment? For more head-scratching top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Don't you understand? What you mean... Take him for a ride.